let's see the general characters of uh, fungi so it will be very important to understand uh, uh, if you want to understand fungi it will be very important to to know the uh, various general properties and characteristics of uh, fungi so my name is janet shankar reddy working as assistant professor in kasar best you so let's see so before entering into the general characters uh, let's take a look into how many fungi so far was discovered what exactly fungi meant for us so all those things let's see so out of uh, you know uh, so far uh, 2.2 to 3.8 million species are uh, species of fungi was identified approximately uh, among that uh, 148000 species have been uh, described so out of uh, the identified fungi just 148000 species have been only described so among that uh, so 8000 species of fungi have uh, harmful impacts or detrimental impacts uh, on plants that is causing a plant diseases so where uh, 300 species of fungi have been reported that that they can that mean uh, uh, that, uh, that they can that can cause uh, uh, human diseases or uh, not only human disease but also uh, causes diseases uh, or have a potential impact to uh, animals and you know uh, every year the number of species discovered was uh, raising constantly raising so uh, you know from past 10 years the discovery of new fungi has been raised from 1000 to 1500 uh, per year in the past 10 years around uh, 2000 to 2500 species have been uh, in the peak level at 2016 so when it comes to the year alone 2019 around 1882 new species of fungi have been discovered so what we know so far is as i said we know uh, 2.2 to 3.8 million species of fungi are identified right so just 148000 species are described which means what we know about fungi is just 5 to 10% what we don't know what we need to uh, know about fungi is around 90% we actually don't know so what we know is just 5 to 10% only so actually the fungus is a latin word so which is actually derived from latin word uh, which means mushroom so not only fungi if you see bacteria virus maybe fungicide also so these are all words actually in english words which actually derived from latin language so when it comes to here fungus means uh, Uh, mushroom so this is general uh, introduction about uh, you know fungi so when it comes to the definition what is fungi what exactly the fungi is so how can we define the fungi so when it comes to uh, if you want to put the fungi in a single definition it will be very difficult but uh, i have collected few information in the various sources i am trying to define the fungi but, so when it comes to fungi fungi is a eukaryotic spore bearing achlorophyllous heterokaryotic and thallophytic organism which is having mainly absorptive type of nutrition and can reproduce by means of sexual and asexual reproduction so let me tell you one by one so what is eukaryote so when it comes to eukaryotes and prokaryotes eu means true karyon means nucleus so eukaryotes consists of true nucleus whereas prokaryotes consist of false nucleus or pseudo nucleus we can say u means true karyon means nucleus whereas fungi having true nucleus spore bearings which means it can produce spores so we will discuss what is spore and what are the different kinds of spores that is produced by fungi so the fungi generally reproduce or generally you know it can uh, spread from area to area by means of a uh, in a, a structure called a spore a chlorophyllous chlorophyllous means it can produce chlorophyll so that uh, it can produce their own food material through the process of photosynthesis when it comes to a chlorophyllous a chlorophyll means it contains no chlorophyll so that it can't able to generate their own food material by the process of uh, photosynthesis so the fungi is generally are a chlorophyllous which can which they can't produce their uh, prepare their own food material because of absence of chlorophyll heterokaryotic hetero means different or uh, you know uh, two more than two i can say karyon means nucleus so which actually contains multi nuclei right so and thallophytic one more word is this, thallophytic what is thallus so these are all terminologies that uh, which were there in the later slides so let me tell you what is thallus so thallus is generally vegetative or reproductive body of fungus so which produces a structure so there is nothing to confuse here uh, it's a general introduction for example imagine if the aliens are coming from another planet to here they want to study about our planet so the first thing is humans right the most precious animal or precious uh, uh, organisms on the earth is humans so in general characters how they will study like you know uh, humans having two eyes one nose two ears something like that right it's a general properties general characteristics what is humans having like that so fungi is what are the different structures what are the different kinds of stuff the fungi is having 
so we are discussing so in one by one we will uh, discuss in detail about in the later slides or else in, in the later classes also so the generally rep uh, i mean uh, absorb nutrients through a type of mechanism called absorptive type simply absorption for example if you see our stomach so generally our intestine uh, can absorb the nutrients through the process of absorption right so it seems simply absorbs the nutrients that is present in the food so absorptive type of nutrition the same uh, fungus also follows and generally reproduced by means of a sexually and sexually here most of the fungi they can reproduce by means of both sexual and asexual reproduction and it can produce a structure called hyphae it's a very simple it's a small tubular like structure so we will discuss in the later slides so let me come once again what is fungi fungi is a eukaryote eukaryotes mean true nucleus spore bearing means which produce spores a chlorophyllous means it produce no chlorophyll so that can't able to produce their own food material by the process of photosynthesis heterokaryote can some multiple nuclei and thallophytic thallus means it is a vegetative or reproductive body of fungus and absorptive type of nutrition so it generally reproduce by mechanism of asexual and sexual reproduction so fungi is generally process if you see the fungi imagine it is a fungal cell wall so the fungal cell wall generally contains primarily chitin as their uh, cell wall uh, i mean major ingredient in the cell wall and a little amount of glucans is also present mostly almost all the fungi contains chitin is their cell wall but except there is a fungi called oomycetes instead of chitin cell wall is present in their cell wall so there is nothing to confuse here fungi is generally contains chitin in their cell wall and also contains a little amount of glucan but few fungi like oomycetes where they contain cellulose instead of chitin so the study of fungi or fungi like organisms is called mycology otherwise called as fungology so the, the term mycology is actually generated from or produced from a greek terminology there is nothing to confuse here generally study of fungi is called mycology whatever it ends with logy it is a mostly greek word only mostly i can say most probably 90 to 95 percent most probably not 90 to 95 percent 95 to 99 percent most probably whatever it ends with logy logy means to study something like that will be there so if it is ends with logy it is a definitely greek word only so the fungi is the latin word generally fungi bacteria virus these are all latin words only okay if whatever it ends with if you see fungi is a latin word right study of fungi is called mycology logy means back uh, it's again a greek word bacteria bacteria is generally a latin word study of bacteria is called bacteriology bacteriology is generally a greek word so something like that so let's see the general characteristics of fungi what is the fungi having so we already discussed it is a eukaryotic a chlorophyllous non motile and sometimes motile also oh, sorry the spores are motile but generally the fungi is non motile sorry to say uh, generally the fungi is non motile but the spores produced by the fungi is motile okay and unicellular or multicellular uh, which can reproduce by sexual and asexual reproduction that we already discussed so let's go uh, one by one in detail about let comes to the nutrition the first one is most important one the nutrition so when it comes to the nutrition in, in uh, fungi so not only for fungi if you take any organism the nutrition is very very important right so when it comes to the nutritional types of fungi so here two kinds of nutrition are two three kinds of nutrition can be seen so it is actually generally heterotroph which means they can't produce their own food material that's why it's called a chlorophyllous a chlorophyllous means no chlorophyll right so that kind of organism is called heterotrophic hetero means uh, they can't produce that they can't prepare, prepare their own food material so that they need to depend on dependent on some other organisms or maybe some other plants or maybe some other kinds of stuff for their energy requirements and the type of nutrition that we already discussed is absorptive type of nutrition so which means uh, when it enters into the plant cells generally uh, uh, you know like the food can be uh, uh, can be uh, uh, you know taken by the method of uh, absorption simply like uh, uh, what our stomach stomach and you know intestine is doing and ingestion is very rare when it comes to fungi but the most important thing or kind of nutrition when it comes to fungi is absorptive type of nutrition so thallus so as i told you that what is thallus so in later slides we will discuss in detail about thallus what is thallus what all the types of thallus will be there and all those things we will discuss in the later slides so generally let me tell you thallus means vegetative or reproductive body of fungus so it is generally thallus may be unicellular which can serve only one cell filamentous septate or non septate septate in the sense so imagine it is a thallus if it is a presence of cross walls it is called septate if no cross walls it is called a septate then i will tell you why septations and why no septations and what is the reason behind all those uh, things that will, that i will discuss in the later slides so generally non motile and as i told you that fungi is generally non motile 
and but motile stages are present as i told you if it is produced spores spores can be motile so if you see the juice spores juice spore consists of flagella so we know very well the function of flagella is swimming right uh, maybe locomotion i can simply say locomotion so generally locomotory organ of fungi right so generally fungi cannot uh, move that is like non motile but the structures that is produced by the fungi like spores so that can be motile for example if you take juice spores so such kind of things are motile so the next one is a cell wall as i told you that it's a very important thing when it comes to fungi generally the cell wall of fungi is made up of chitin chitin is the chief compound that very very important one we can expect exams like this you know what is the cell wall compound present in the fungi so fungal cell wall is made up of chitin whereas vomicota this is also a fungi like thing but this not actually classified under the fungi but it's classified under chromista so when it when when we enter into classification you guys will uh, well aware of, uh, well uh, aware of the, uh, about this so generally fungal cell wall is composed of chitin but a fungi that is a vomicota where instead of uh, chitin a cellulose is present so when it comes to life cycle simple and complex types of life cycles are present and the sexuality as we discussed already so the fungi generally reproduce by means of sexual and asexual reproduction and one more thing i mentioned is homothallic and heterothallic there is nothing to confuse here thallus means as i told you that vegetative or reproductive body of fungus right homo means male and female reproductive organs are present in the same thallus is called homothallic heterothallic means hetero means different male and female reproductive organs are not present in the same thallus but different thallus that is called heterothallic so this about this homothallism and heterothallism we have a separate uh, topic uh, uh, so so we'll discuss there in detail about uh, this mechanism of homothallism and heterothallism and propagules very simply how it will spread simply like we know very well that fungi generally spread through spores so don't confuse too much i will tell you what is spores and all those things simply i will tell you so if a spore is simply like a, a propagating structure a seed material of fungi simply very simple so typically they are microscopic we can't see with our naked eye so that it's a typically microscopic and mostly fungi are motile and few spores are non motile so when it comes to habitat ubiquitous as saprobes ubiquitous means which is found everywhere in the world like found everywhere in the world that is called uh, ubiquitous saprobes saprobes means dead and decaying organic matter uh, grows on dead and decaying organic matter even after death they can survive in the in the crop stubbles and all those stuff and when it comes to symbionts uh, beneficial relationship between parasites so depending on another organism for their nutritional requirements best example uh, fungi so they can't able to produce their own food material right in fungi also fewer parasites and you know saprobes so all those things will be there that we will discuss in the later slides and hyperparasites very simple uh, acting as a parasite and the parasite is called hyperparasite so they general reproduce by means of uh, as i told you that uh, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction so sexually they can reproduce by sexual reproduction when it comes to asexual reproduction there are other mechanisms are there like uh, uh, budding fragmentation these are all the different kinds of asexual reproduction or mechanisms that uh, uh, where the fungi can reproduce but generally most of the fungi can reproduce by means of sexual and asexual reproduction so when we uh, when we enter into the life cycle you guys will uh, uh, come to know and fungi exhibit a phenomenon of alternation of generations i will tell you what is alternation of generation not here in somewhere else because we have separate aspects of uh, alteration of generation so the fungi lack chlorophyll as i told you that lack chlorophyll so that can't produce their own food through the process of uh, uh, photosynthesis and uh, one more point uh, you know the majority of the fungi belonging to the phylum so forget about this points so the majority of the fungi belonging to the phylum ascomycota basidiomycota and geomycota so these are all the most important uh, phylum when it comes to ascomycota sorry when it comes to fungi as i said you that uh, majority of the fungi belonging to basidiomycota ascomycota and uh, as they go my quota right so let's uh, for your understanding let me tell you something so among the imagine so we have 148000 species of fungi right among that around 60 to 70% of the species that comes under ascomycota alone because it is a biggest phylum of fungi where majority of the fungi belong to this so mostly plant pathogens and few mushrooms few mushrooms okay very few not uh, too much very few mushrooms comes under ascomycota so when it comes to basidiomycota 
around 30 to 40 percent of the fungi that comes under this basidiomycota mostly mushrooms like if you see that the cultivated mushrooms like agaricas or whatever the species of fungi that we are uh, eating are edible so all those are comes under uh, this uh, basidiomycota generally as it did you uh, you know like uh, plant pathogens mushrooms all those are uh, you know like uh, fungi so let's uh, go through fungal cell wall so what is a fungal cell wall so oh, what are the different components will be there in the fungal cell wall now we'll see so sir these are all the general things like if you see the eukaryotes like uh, uh, you know even plants and you can see fungi and whatever this eukaryotes but general structure is uh, same only but the most important thing we need to discuss here is the fungal cell wall because the remaining things are like you know ribosomes are protein synthesis golgi operators endo endoplasmic reticulum microtubules lysosomes vacuoles food storage and other functions also are maintaining the stability and all the stuff cytoplasm like uh, it's like a kind of protoplasm where this liquid kind of material where all the cell organelles will slice on and the nuclear membrane all the stuff will be there but the most importantly what we need to discuss here is a fungal cell ultra structure of fungal cell let's go into the fungal cell what are all the different kinds of things will be there in the fungal cell and especially fungal cell wall so this is a very important as i said you that uh, uh, fungal cell wall is composed of chitin and a little amount of glucan right so let's go through what all the different components will be there so when we see the ultra structure of a fungi so generally the food storage organ of fungi is generally i mean like food was actually stored in the form of vacuoles and vacuoles are generally stores the food and the same vacuoles also performs one more function that is a osmotic function so it can regulate the both things it can regulate the osmotic functions of the cell i mean the entire ultra structure of cell and it also helps to store the food material so the generally the food material of fungi generally stored in the form of glycogen or lipids or oils so let me tell you one thing for example when it comes to our uh, humans so fat will be uh, i mean energy will be stored in the form of fat that to adipose tissue in the in, in adipose tissue uh, so energy will be f uh, stored in the form of adip uh, that is the fats so whenever uh, our body will requires the energy can be utilized like a, it's like a reserve food material right i can say reserve food material so here fungi is also have a reserve food material in the form of glycogen in the form of lipids or in the form of oils where vacuoles can generally store this food materials and the same vacuoles also perform another function that is osmotic function so generally 80 type of ribosomes are present in uh, uh, in, in fungi the chief sterol compound so which is the chief sterol compound is ergosterol it's a very very important one ergosterol so generally this ergosterol what the ergosterol will do is controlling the membrane fluidity membrane associated with enzymes and the transport mechanisms all this was regulated by this ergosterol so you just uh, take a look here this is the ergosterol that yellow color uh, small small yellow color thing will be there here so this is generally ergosterol so this ergosterol helps to uh, you know uh, it is actually a sterile compound helps to you know of maintaining the fluidity control membrane all those things and when it comes to oomycetes generally i told you fungal cell wall is made up of cellulose when it comes to oomycetes oomycetes cell wall is made up of sorry fungal cell wall is made up of chitin oomycetes cell wall is made up of cellulose sorry so when it comes to the sterile compound in fungi ergosterol is the sterile compound so when it comes to oomycota cholesterol is the sterile compound so not only oomycetes kidneys also uh, store their food material i mean uh, the sterile compound is uh, cholesterol so the same cholesterol what we are having like in, in the animals and mammals the same kind of uh, uh, cholesterol is also can be stored in uh, oomycetes so let's see what are the different kinds of uh, uh, you know points that we can consider when it comes to exam so in exam i have uh, observed like uh, what is the reserve food material of fungus or what is the food storage are kind of uh, uh, food storage product of fungus something like that they will ask glycogen lipids and oils and ats type of ribosomes they won't ask what are the uh, uh, you know type of ribosomes are present in eukaryotes because everybody know about so they will ask like 70s types of ribosomes are present in eukaryotes sorry prokaryotes so prokaryotes for example if you see bacteria bacteria is a prokaryote right so bacteria possess which kind of ribosomes 70s type of ribosomes which means so if eukaryotes are having 80s type of ribosomes automatically the prokaryotes are having 70s type of ribosomes so what are all the things that comes under prokaryotes if you see bacteria fastidious vascular bacteria pyroplasma spiroplasma all the stuff they have in 70 types of ribosomes so the sterol compound is ergosterol in fungi whereas when it comes to oomycetes cholesterol is the sterol compound like like as like of animals and mammals so as i said you that uh, 
fungal this is general uh, what what uh, stuff that we have seen about is just uh, you know general uh, introduction about the fungal cell so now we will see fungal cell wall as i told you that fungal cell wall is made up of chitin right now we will see what all the different stuff will be there in the fungal cell wall so this is a typical structure of fungal so imagine this is the typical structure right so generally the fungal cell wall contains 80 to 90 percent of the carbohydrates and the remaining amount is lipids so remaining amount is lipids so as i said you that cell wall of fungal fungi is composed of chitin and a little amount of glucan is also present so if you see here if you see here this is the chitin compound for your understanding i just placed a picture so this is the chitin the so, fungal cell wall is composed of chitin and little amount of glucan is also there this is the little amount of glucan but the main uh, chief compound and uh, you know stability compound that is when it comes to fungal cell wall is chitin only so we can see here chitin this is the chitin and the little amount as i said you this is the remaining composition where it was linked by the little amount is glucans that we can also called as a beta glucans okay so when it comes to the chitin general let's talk about the chitin it's actually english word where where it actually comes from a french word chitine so which is actually derived in 1820 from uh, uh, from the greek word so which means covering covering means chitin as i said you that chitin is the cell wall right chitin means covering a general terminology chitin means covering so actually the structure of chitin was determined by albert hoffman in 1929 he is not a mycologist or plant pathologist but is generally a chemist okay he generally the structure was determined by uh, hoffman so when it comes to uh, few other things if i want to talk about chitin so generally chitin is a long chain polymer of n acetyl d glucosamine units where it was linked by beta 1 comma 3 glycosidic bonds so let me repeat chitin is generally a long chain polymer of n acetyl d glucosamine units where it was linked by beta 1 comma 3 and beta 1 comma 4 so if you see glucan is linked of 1 comma 3 glucose residues when it comes to the chitin it is a linked uh, i mean it was linked by the units of beta 1 comma 4 so in general if you see this cross links we are seeing the cross links here right so let me show you here the cross links are there right so here this cross links are bonded one by one so this cross links how these cross links are bonded one by one by the bonds of beta 1 comma 3 and beta 1 comma 6 glucan bonds if you see here so this bonds are bonded one by one the cross links are actually branched by glucans are bonded by beta 1 comma 3 and beta 1 comma 6 glucans if you see here we can clearly observe here this is generally a chitin and it was above the chitin as a said you little amount of glucan is there right so this glucan bonds this cross bonds was actually linked by beta 1 comma 6 and beta 1 comma 3 bonds these bonds are actually covalently bonds covalently bonds bonds means sharing each other so these bonds are equally sharing with each other and connecting right so in a three dimensional view if you see we can see this three dimensional view so generally they are bonded uh, by using 1 comma 3 and 1 comma 6 glucans so as i said you the fungal cell wall is made up of chitin right so instead of chitin cellulose is present when it comes to oomycota group of fungi if you see here pythopthora see actually pythium pythopthora downy mildew so all are comes under oomycetes group of fungi only if you see pythopthora is actually comes under oomycota right see we can see here fungal uh, cell wall is cellulose when it comes to oomycota that is a pythopthora their cell wall is made up of cellulose we can see here instead of chitin here instead of chitin here whereas cellulose is present in uh, oomycota it's a very very important the cell wall composition of oomycota is cellulose and a little amount of hydroxyproline is also present it's a very 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 important i have seen this question in 2022 net 2022 net they have asked that which of the following compound is present in oomycota so actually uh, the cell wall composition of oomycota generally fungal cell wall is chitin and glucan they have given hydroxyproline cellulose was not there but they have given hydroxyproline so which means they contains cellulose and a little amount of not little amount a more amount of hydroxyproline only that i will show you in the later slides so oomycota cell wall is made up of cellulose but there is an exception few fungi even though they comes under oomycota their cell wall is made up of chitin like fungi like acaila aphidogaila saproligenia leptomitis there is a lot of fungi acaila aphidogaila saproligenia and leptomitis they are actually comes under oomycetes but their cell wall is made up of 
chitin only let me repeat once again generally fungal cell wall is made up of cellulose but oomycota group of cell wall is made up of sorry fungi cell wall is made up of chitin and glucan oomycota is cellulose plus hydroxy proline but when it comes to few fungi from oomycota akaila aphidogyl and saprolignia leptomatous even though they comes under oomycota their cell wall is made up of chitin so that's why this fungi are called chitin containing oomycetes group of fungi so that is Achaella, Aphidogyla, Saprolignia and Leptometus. I have seen this question in 2019. So, so we can observe here. So, so generally this is how the fungal membrane will be like. So these different kinds of pass pulpate, cell walls, you know, like, you know, this is uh, cell walls, ion exchangers, you know, ergosterols, various other kinds of compounds will be there. So this is ergosterol, as I told you, sterile compound, this is the ergosterol. So when it comes to fungi, ergosterol is the chief sterile compound. When it comes to umicota, cholesterol is the chief sterile compound. So let's see, as I told you that fungal cell wall is made up of cellulose, right? So let's see where all the different kinds of fungi and their cell wall compositions. So fungal cell wall is generally made up of fungi in almost all fungi, Arascomegata, Bacidiamata, what are all the majority of the fungi, their cell wall is made up of chitin and glucan. There is nothing to confuse here, okay? Then second one is Jigomycota. So Jigomycota cell wall is made up of chitosan chitin. Chitosan chitin. So don't confuse yourself. Just now I told you that uh, fungi is just now I told that fungal cell wall is made up of chitin. Again I am telling Jigomycota cell wall is made up of chitosan chitin. Because Jigomycota also comes under classified under fungi, right? There is nothing to confuse here. Chitin and chitons are more or less similar only. Chitin and chitosan, chitosan are more or less similar only. That I will tell you in the late, next slide. Okay? Fungal cell wall is made up of chitin and glucose whereas jagomycota cell wall is made up of chitose and chitin so oomycota cell wall is made up of cellulose and hydroxyproline hypocytidiomycota cell wall is made up of cellulose and chitin so it, it contains chitin as well as a little amount of cellulose also the next one yeast cell wall is made up of mannin beta glucan Algae, algae cell wall is made up of glucan and cellulose whereas trichomycetes cell wall is made up of polygalactosum and galactron Bacterial cell wall is made up of generally cell membrane or uh, that uh, they don't have original cell wall or something like that you can call a cell membrane. So generally it is uh, composed of um, peptidoglycan otherwise called as mucopeptides and virus cell wall. Virus don't have any cell wall but protein coat act as a cell wall or protecting structure. So generally virus cell wall is made up of pro uh, virus cell wall is generally composed of protein coat. So this protein code is not a cell wall but act as a protecting structure. So these are all the different kinds of cell walls. Very very important. We can definitely expect one. Not only the normal exams but also if you see NET, ARS, SRF, JRF, whatever the kinds of exam that is related to plant pathology. So these videos will be definitely helpful for you. So, so let's see the fibrous components of uh, fungal cell wall. So in the Past four or five previous slides, we were vigorously hearing, uh, hearing a few components that is the chitin, chitosan, and cellulose. So, when it comes to fungi, fungal cell wall is made up of generally chitin and a little amount of glucan. So, when it comes to cellulose, oomycota group of cell wall is made up of cellulose and a little amount of hydroxyproline, right? And when it comes to jigomycota, as I said, the chitosan, right? Chitosan, chitin, or chitin, chitosan, whatever. So here the structural role of chitin is actually filled by cellulose and aggregated by beta 1,4 glucan chains in oomycota. There is nothing to confuse. Here if you see here, just a few compounds come here, few compounds changed here and one other compound is changed here. That's why the same chitin was replaced by cellulose when it comes to oomycota because I am not a chemist, uh, chemist and uh, I was not well aware of chemistry and all the stuff. I am just uh, showing you that uh, few compounds was missed in the rings and few compounds were added in the other rings. That's why the same chitin will be uh, uh, will become cellulose when it comes to oomycota. Okay? So the role, role of chitin can be replaced by cellulose in oomycota. So when it comes to zygomycota, as I told you that generally all fungi cell wall is made up of chitin and again i told you that jagomycota fungi cell wall is made up of chitose and chitin right here jagomycota is also classified under fungi only there is nothing to confuse here okay but here when it comes to jagomycota chitin fibers are there here and the chitin fibers are modified after their synthesis by the by the partial or complete deacylation and produce 
poly beta glucosamine this poly beta generally glucosamine is called as chitosan only there is nothing too much difference when it comes to chitin and chitosan there is if you see the structures also only one compound is changed here only one compound is changed when nh2 here nh co ch3 only one compound is changed and one more compound here i think so even one compound is changed there will be a lot of changes when it comes to chemistry right so anyway so more or less chitin and chitosan are both are more or less similar only but even chitosan is also composed of, of this 1,4 glucosamine units only so here jago my code that's why i told you that uh, uh, why i told you that chitin and chitosan are more or less similar hope uh, you guys have a little idea fungal cell wall is made up of chitin and a little amount of glucan whereas jagomycota cell wall is made up of chitin chitosan whereas oomycete cell wall is made up of cellulose little amount of hydroxyproline so this is a general chemical composition and the cell walls uh, of various uh, fungi as i told you that uh, what is the composition of chitin what is the composition of cellulose glucans proteins lipids all those things uh, will be there this is actually the dry weight of uh, total fraction when in percentage okay so generally who my cut i told you that who my cut a group of fungal cell wall is made up of contains cellulose it contains 25 percent of cellulose and 65 percent of glucan and 4 percent of protein and lipids not necessary generally i'm telling so who my cut a group of fungal cell wall is made up of cellulose cellulose is a major here and chitridomycota chitridomycota generally classified under fungi only right so chitridomycota fungal cell wall is made up of 58 percent of chitin and 16 percent of glucan as i told you generally fungal cell wall is made up of cell uh, sorry uh, chitin and little amount of glucan is also there if you see uh you know is also little amount of glucan is present chitridomycota is also little amount of glucan is present in fact if i want to tell you umycota can say more amount of glucans than cellulose right so jagomycota ascomycota basidomycota all are classified under fungi only generally fungal cell wall is made up of chitin if you see here jagomycota is 9% ascomycota that is saccharomyces 1% fusarium 39% cyzophilus 5% coprinus actually generally basidomycota there is nothing to confuse here okay so this uh, i'm just want to tell you the chemical compositions of various fungi or selected groups of fungi so each fungi contains not a little amount of glucans but majority amount contains glucans only so when it comes to jagomycota 44 percent ascomycota 60 percent around basidium i got a 50 to 81 percent okay so and little amount of but we can say little amount of proteins proteins is little amount here but generally chitin and glucan is the major chief component when it comes to fungi so now you guys have a little bit clarity about this uh, fungal silver and all the stuff so let's go to another uh, general properties i mean uh, characteristics of fungi and there is a terminology called plasmodium generally plasmodium means uh, multi nucleate mass of protoplasm is called plasmodium this is the, generally we can say it look like amoeba right uh, changing the shapes all the stuff so uh, it is it is also like that only it is a multi nucleus mass of protoplasm so protoplasm is simply like a liquid kind of material we can see in eukaryotic cells right so so this is multi nucleate mass of protoplasm is called uh, plasmodium generally this plasmodium can be produced by a, a fungi called club root of cabbage that is plasmodiopora brassicae in history also we discussed about this this club root of cabbage life cycle was discovered by ms voronin and he discovered the life cycle of the fungus and named this club root of pathogen is plasmodiopora brassicae and this voronin is actually from russia and is also a student of anton d barry and let's go through you know like a uh, few other properties i told you that you know spore sci-fi all the stuff will be i told right so let's uh, tell you what is actually the spore is so spore is actually the reproductive structure of fungi so here i can also say it is a seed material of fungus so imagine so for uh, rice or wheat whatever you say even seedlings or whatever it is so they are germinating from the seed only right so the seed contains some kind of genetic information so that from that it is germinating and producing a new plant whatever the plant you can take so whatever it is maybe propagating material any propagating material that is considered as seed only for rice it may be a seedling so for wheat it may be seeds for potato it may be a tuber for bulb it may be uh, uh, for onion it may be a bulb for uh, uh, uh you know for uh, uh, grapes it may be a uh, grafting material that is a uh, planting material so whatever it is the propagating material the the term reproductive structure or propagating material is the best suitable word when it comes to here actually spore is the reproductive structure or 
the propagating structure of fungi generally it contains imagine it is a spore it contains generally maybe uninucleate or multinucleate and it is you know it, it has a capacity to regenerate it has a capacity to regenerate so it, a nuclei means it contains a genetic information so that this spore can uh, able to develop into a new fungi so it's simply simply i can say fungi can't spread through air so that it need to transfer it need to spread from place to place so that it produce an another kind of stuff that can be uh, where all the mycelium other kinds of stuff was compactly packed in the form of nuclei and it can spread through the spores so spores are general reproductive uh, material of fungus whereas maybe it uninucleate or multinucleate and generally the sizes of spores are ranges from 2 to 150 micrometer in diameter so generally i have just you know uh, draw few spores here not looking good just uh, uh, for our understanding so these are all how actually the uh, ascospores look like this is a who spore this is a juice spore these are all the smart spore and this is alternate area spore and these are all the urodo spore these are all the different kinds of spores so this one spore is enough to start an infection and to start a new i mean to cause a disease one spore in the sense not one spore uh, generally couple of spores is more than enough to uh, successfully uh, infect and cause the infection but generally i am telling so from even from one spore also the fungi starts to germinate so these are all the various kinds of spores that is produced by the plant pathogens for your understanding i just uh, uh, you know uh, browse and find some kind of information from university of antigua medellin columbia and these are all the few spores have actually look like as i told you speed metal of fungus seed metal of fungus right so let's see so these are the spore of uh, 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 agros iv and alternate area the second one is arthrinium and belterania Fourth one is Cladosporium, Curvularia, Drusillera, Epicocum, Fusarium, and this one is uh, here. This one is a uh, Nigrospora, and uh, uh, this one is uh, Leptospiria, and Pithomyces, Pleospora, Paxinia, and uh, Tetrapola, and Torula, and Eustula. So these are all the different kinds of spores that is produced by the fungi, based on their biology and their you know uh, the mechanism. It, they can produce a different kinds of spores. There is nothing to confuse here because, however, the all human beings are not looking same. The same way all the spores are not looking same. There is nothing to confuse here, but the mechanism is same. It will spread from place to place and cause the infection. That's it. Okay. The spore sizes are maybe colors are maybe uh, looks may be different, but the mechanism and uh, the function is same. It can spread from area to area and can cause establish an infection. That's it. So then now we are, uh, you know, we'll see as I told you that the thallus are uh, mycelium and some kind of uh, things that are told you in the general characters, right? So let's continue. What is the thallus? So thallus is generally vegetative or reproductive or vegetative or somatic body of uh, fungus is called as thallus. So generally entire body of fungus, this is the entire body of fungus. If it is imagine if it is a thallus, entire body of fungus entire body of fungus is called thallus actually thallus is not differentiated into generally distinct part uh, uh, generally uh, but it is actually divided into two that is a holocarpic and eucarpic thallus holocarpic thallus and eucarpic thallus here when it comes to the entire uh, holocarpic thallus entire thallus is at maturity they can convert it into more reproductive structure is called holocarpic so i repeat the entire body of thallus can be converted into one or more reproductive structures is called holocarpic thallus example is olfidium and syncytrium so when it comes to the uh, eucarpic thallus at the maturity the thallus is differentiated into reproductive structure and vegetative part so this reproductive structure is used for reproduction whereas a vegetative part can be used for absorption for example fungi like pythium and pythopthora can produce a eucarpic kind of thallus let me come once again thallus is a vegetative or somatic body that is the entire body of fungus is called thallus I, uh, that's a uh, one part so generally the thallus is uh, con uh, i mean uh, differentiated into two things holocarpic thallus and eucarpic holocarpic means entire body of fungus at maturity can be converted into one or more reproductive structures is called holocarpic example is olfidium and syncytrium these are all fungi I mean, there is no need to confuse there is no need to worry okay i will uh, i will tell you in detail about each and every single fungi when we enter into detailed classification you just remember the names okay and the next one is uh, eucarpic thallus 
at maturity or after maturity the actually here when it comes to holocarpic it is not differentiated into different parts only one thing uh, one or more reproductive structures only there is no vegetative and other uh, 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 you know uh, uh, variations for other functions but when it comes to eucarpic thallus two way two things will be here that is a, it is differentiated into vegetative part that's why we can see vegetative part and reproductive part so vegetative part is only for absorbing nutrient because the fungi need to survive fungi need to get energy right so it is it is not uh, uh, it can perform photosynthesis because it is a chlorophyllous right so that's why it is vegetative part which only absorbs the nutrients or meet the energy requirements of the fungi so when it comes to reproductive part every organism on the planet requires a reproduction to i know uh, to you know to survive further or produce the further generations right so here also it is differentiated into two reproductive and vegetative reproduction is only for reproductive structures and reproductive reproduction purpose when it comes to vegetative part absorbs the nutrients for example pithium and pythodora so when it comes to mycelium a group or mass of hypae is collectively called as mycelium we can see here a group or mass of hypae collectively called as mycelium this is all collectively called as mycelium so this is all together called as mycelium okay here and i put one there is a reason because i just want to uh, tell you in detail about this mycelium and all the stuff and i will discuss in the next slide so hyphae the second one and it is actually a microscopic thin tubular a thread like structure uh, where you know it is filled with the protoplasm because you don't want to dry up right so that's why it's filled with the protoplasm here we can see it is a thin filament tubular like structure so this is combinedly called as mycelium whereas the single unit or the single filament as a thread like structure or hair like structure imagine all the hair in the, our head is considered as mycelium all the hair together so a single hair is called hyphae so now your doubt got clear right so all the imagine in our head there are plenty of hair all the hair together is called as mycelium but only an individual hair a single hair is called hyphae hyphae is generally thread like structure transparent structure where it is filled with protoplasm here generally hyphae is divided into two septate hyphae and aseptate hyphae so it is a continuation from the for the previous slide so let's see what is septate hyphae so when it comes to septate hyphae the name itself indicates septation it contains septa so if you see here presence of cross walls or presence of septa <coughs> is called septate hyphae so septate hyphae contains septum whereas a septate hyphae hyphae consists of no septum we can clearly observe here so it is consist of septa right it is septate so no septate means no cross walls here we can see the nuclei freely move i mean uh, freely uh, present in the uh, uh, that is uh, hyphae we know very well what is hyphae it is a thin tubular like structure okay here two things uh, again the septa is divided into two a septate and septate septate means presence of cross walls or septa a septate means presence of no cross walls or absence of cross walls this a septate is otherwise called as cenocytic mycelium or non septate hyphae sorry cenocytic hyphae or non septate hyphae septate means presence of cross walls a septate means no cross walls a septate hyphae is otherwise called as cenocytic hyphae or non septate hyphae so as i told you mycelium right so let me discuss in detail about this mycelium mycelium is generally entire body of fungus is called mycelium right so here again the mycelium is two types hyaline mycelium or colored mycelium hyaline means white color okay white color or colorless okay here septate hyaline mycelium is produced by fusarium uh, so if you observed the on the spores uh, i told you in the spore section the fusarium spore was actually hyaline in color so of course the mycelium is also be hyaline in color a septate hyaline is produced by pythium when it comes to colored mycelium which means pigmented which means presence of color different kinds of colors maybe orange color brown color various kinds of colors will be there best example is alternaria septate colored mycelium is produced by alternaria a septate colored mycelium is produced by mucorrhizal group of fungi so again the mycelium is a you know ectopytic and endopytic ecto means the mycelium lives at the surface of the host example erysiphae when it comes to endophytic it will go inside the cell so mycelium actually penetrate and develop inside the host or inside the cell is called endophytic for example levulula so you observe here ectopytic is actually present outside the cell only this is called ecto means outside okay ectopytic mycelium means mycelium grows outside the cell 
endophytic means mycelium is actually enters inside the cell that is called endophytic we can clearly observe this is the mycelium it is actually penetrated inside when it comes to here it is actually grow, uh, grown above only so that is it is called ectophytic and this is called endophytic so for your clear understanding i have placed one more picture here this is ectopytic ecto means outside right see it is not penetrated inside the cells so what are the small bubble like structures these are all hostoria not uh, mycelium okay so when it comes to endophytic that is penetrating inside the cell we can clearly see it is penetrated inside the cell that is called endophytic and one more thing uh, when it comes to mycelium is homokaryotic mycelium and dikaryotic mycelium homo means same so mycelium contains genetically identified nuclei only one kind of nuclei for example we can observe in uh, aspergillus and penicillium so when it comes to dikaryotic mycelium has two different sexual compatible nuclei so compared sexually compatible nuclei present in dikaryote the name itself indicate homo means same dikaryote means different here same nuclei is present in homokaryotic different nuclei is present in dikaryotic and the second one is i told you hyphae right hyphae is generally a small thin hair like structure or tubular like structure that is a transparent structure and it is filled with protoplasm here the most importantly we need to consider is how the fungi expands its mycelium or fungi expands its hyphae this is actually comes from this protoplasmic structure let me tell you this hyphae very important uh, you know uh, uh, mechanisms uh, uh, goes so let me tell you the phytoplas cytoplasmic streaming or fungal hyphae is a unidirectional at the tip imagine so this is a unidirection actually all the protoplasm will flow on a unidirection so that what will happen uh, let me show you uh, so that uh, what will happen this mycelium starts to grow because all the protoplasm is moving in unidirection so that this hyphae starts to grow multiply 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 and it spreads to all over the plant this is what actually the mechanism happen but when it comes to hyphae the cytoplasmic streaming is unidirectional all the cytoplasm will go only one direction so at the key of uh, you know at the apex you know um, the fungal hyphae actually lies at the apex you know like this uh, this uh, apex okay all the energy will goes into the only one direction here one more thing we need to understand in when it comes to higher fungi like ascomycota and basidiomycota uh, a small spherical shell small small spherical shells are there right so this spherical shells are called as spitzen corpora or epical body remember this uh, word terminology spitzen corpora okay so this spitzen corpora can be especially observed in growing hyphae but as i told you that all energy or protoplasm moves into one direction right and the moving direction on the upper side are the apical side here uh, i know here at the apex side a small small uh, uh, you know dots like will be there for our understanding i will tell you small small dots are there right so this small small dots are like spitzen corpor otherwise called as apical body so actually this spitzen corpor what will do so it helps in the synthesizing the cytoplasm what will happen if it synthesizes it will continuously get the energy so that it will continuously grow right so this is what actually happens in hyphae so in hyphae spitzen corpora will be there at the apex so all the cytoplasm will go in only one direction that is upward direction where the cytoplasm uh, cytoplasmic streaming are the apex at the apex spitzen corpora will be there so this spitzen corpora will synthesize the cytoplasm so all the vacuole will also go in one direction because all the energy material as i told you that uh, that is a reserve food material because for the growth the food also will be required right so all the food material the vacuole will continuously supplies the energy that is the glycogen or lipids and oils whatever it will be there in the fung it will continuously supplies to the apex side so this spitzen corpora utilizes all these things and the mycelium starts to grow and you know one more thing is uh, the intense uh, biosynthesis activity or energy generation will happens in the endoplasmic reticulum or mitochondria so if you see we can observe here not clearly but somewhat we can observe here so here uh, mitochondria all the stuff will be there because what is the mitochondria energy generation because continuously energy will generate continuously cytoplasm will grow in move in one direction where spitzen corpora will be there and synthesizes all the cytoplasm so what will happen automatically the mycelium starts to grow where is if hypha is growing one one hypha means what is it is if, imagine if it is a single hair in the entire head if one one hair is growing 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 what will happen automatically the hair also will grow and the mycelium also will grow and the fungi also will grow this is what actually the mechanism will happen 
so other uh, important uh, things in we need to see is so rhizoid rhizoid general terminologies general structures i mean i mean uh, uh, general properties so if you see rhizoids are the anchoring and absorbing organ of only rhizophus not all the fungi i repeat only rhizophus we can see here rhizoids are simply anchoring organ or i can say basement basement or anchoring organ or attachment organ of uh, rhizophus i can't say fungi okay i can't say fungi so this is a rhizophus Uh, and the second one is a sporangiopore sporangiopore is a stalk like structure that bears the sporangia this is like a pole like structure or stalk like structure that bearing a globose like structure called sporangiopore this stalk like structure is called sporangiospore this globose like structure is called sporangia this is the next definition sporangia it is a spore bearing structure where spores are packed inside a sporangium is a sac like structure where membranous wall here see it is actually sporangia is a sac like structure we can clearly see it is a sac like structure where spores are packed inside right so spores are packed inside so all the spores are there inside and it is a sac like structure inside the sac spores will be there in the membrane wall so this membrane wall is covering right yes so sporangio spores so the spores which are packed inside the sporangium is called sporangio spores let me give you so this is the rhizoids which is giving the anchoring and a strong a, a lengthy pole like structure will be there i mean a, a rod like structure for your understanding i will say like a stalk like structure is there so that is a sporangiopore this sporangiopore bears a head or sac like structure is called sporangia inside the sporangia spores will be there that is sporangio spores now you got uh, all the points i think so this is a generally a separate and aseptic mycelium this is that that we already discussed so as i told you that homothallic and heterothallic so male and female organs are present in a same thallus is called homothallic whereas male and female organs are present in a different thallus is called heterothallic so homothallus is generally uh, type of reproduction can be observed in pythium whereas heterothallic type of reproduction can be observed in pythoptera so this is about uh, few general characters of fungi so the continuation of general characters of fungi will be continued in the next video so further information and if students want to continue so i suggest you to go with uh, my book a vision into plant pathology a complete student version and uh, for further uh, details and all stuff you guys can always reach us at www.geekyresearch.com stay geeky stay tuned we are team geeky researchers